So what we're gonna do now is start playing around with plume shapes. This is what I call the whimsical feather. It's kind of a lighthearted, jolly feather. And all I've done, it's a basic feather, but periodically I've thrown in swirls. And it really changes the whole ambiance of the feather. This is easy to do because you already know how to do the basic feather, so let's go stitch it. I'm starting at the base of my feather, just like before, and I'm following that white soap guideline. I usually start off with some traditional plumes, but again, there's no rule about where you place these swirls or how many you place. Let's swing out and do one now. Come up, swing out, go to the center, and bring that stitching line all the way back into that spine guideline. As I do this, I kind of have a, a goal of working to make sure that I don't try to be symmetric from one side to the other. And what I mean by that is I, I don't want to have a swirl fall on one side and have it fall on the same place on the opposite side. I kind of have a feeling that variety makes things look a little bit more interesting. I want to show you what I just did because I want you to know how to save it. This is my white soap line that is my spine guideline and obviously you're trying to stick to that. You can see right in here I've accidentally stitched over it so I'm really off my guideline now. Not a big deal at all. The way to solve that is I'm going to stitch a couple different structures on this side. Once I even up again I'm just going to follow my guideline like I was before. This is an important save that you're going to use a lot of in feather quilting. Okay, so I got one there on that side, but I still got a huge space between that guideline and these plumes. So now if I look at it again, I can stitch on either side now. So I'm going to come back here. And again, this is very, very similar to the traditional or basic freeform feather that we did earlier. The only difference is periodically I am substituting a swirl for what have, would have normally been a plume. Now I have entered the curl of this feather and this is the place where we kind of create the drama. A feather that curls tightly into itself is gonna just really be much more striking. So as I'm working in the curl, I need to be mindful that I'm gonna be coming back and stitching plumes on this side. So I wanna take up a lot of space, but I don't wanna take up all of the space. And again, it's probably time to throw in a swirl over here. Now the swirls that I'm making on this are pretty plump. They're kind of fat swirls. And this also looks great if you do long skinny swirls. And I will show you a sample of that when I finish this one so you have something to compare it to. And again, I'm just kind of working my way around. Another swirl on this side. Notice that I pivot my quilt a lot as I work. And in real life on a real quilt, I am gonna pivot that quilt as much as I possibly can. If it's a giant quilt, there isn't quite as good of an ability to pivot, but being able to see what you're doing really matters. So if it means stopping and readjusting the way your quilt is oriented in the machine, then I always do it. Do a big swirl here. And again, I want you to notice I have stitched all the way here on that white soap line. That's not a problem, that's not a mistake, but what it means is if I'm gonna respect that, that guideline curve, I now need to stick, stitch several on this one side. I can't really come back here until I can meet up with it on the opposite side.
Okay, we have met back up. So I can kind of do whatever I feel like. Now when I get this far into a curl, I can start ignoring that Mark Spine Guideline because I've just stitched that what I call the final plume at the tip right there. And I'm calling that my final one because it's very long. And you can see it doesn't respect the guideline. And that's normal when you're doing a real dramatic feather like this one where it's really tightly curled into itself. You've got to have the freedom to improvise at the end. So this is how this guy came out. What I want to show you real fast is for the sake of comparison, this one. And what's different here is if you look closely at our swirls, they're skinny swirls. They're no longer those fat, plump swirls. It looks great. So do whichever way strikes you is easier to do or whichever way you like better, and you're going to do fine. Hey.